just a prank. Two boys who were brothers because they had the same parents also had one common uncle who one fine day got a leg in the spring net. For that reason rose the boy's interest in this uncle so strong that not caring is never happy. If you are not alive, then you cannot eat more and you can't play either. It does not matter, because I am a horse. Well, if you're dead, you can't be a horse either. I'm not dead. You are stupid. You'll die if you don't get your leg taken off because you have blood poisoning and now the bacilli have already run past the knee. You have to the doctor and having the leg sawed off. I don't want to see the doctor. He stings. The doctor is smart, the younger brother began. He just saws the leg off so the batteries don't leave a mark on you. The bacteria, said Big Brother. But now the little boy had whose big toe, however, had completely stopped bleeding, lost all courage. He closed his mouth up so that his own head, which was very small after all, was in danger of being swallowed, and bellowed the two big boys, who were indeed small in comparison even bigger boys, began to feel sorry for him. Bad, said the biggest one. We'll fix it. We take him home and saw even the leg of him. We use my bandsaw. Well, that we can't. Safely, we can do it. Such a thin leg is nothing against it, Log. I saw it over the day before yesterday without shaking. What's your name? Peter, said the little boy with so much crying in his voice that there almost no voice was. Come on, Peter. Then you don't have to go to the doctor. Then I'll probably saw yours legs off. I want my leg, cried the little one. I want your leg too, because I am a horse. Well, you get to keep it yourself. And then you get an artificial leg, and it's as good as a real leg, and then you have three. But you have to rap for the bacilli can soon run through such a small leg as yours there. May I have my leg and keep it? Yes, Safoli, and you get to take it home and play with it. I want to be a horse when I grow up, the little one explained while he confidently went with the two brothers, for a horse can run all it can. The two big boys agreed with him, feeling much bigger as they walked and proved him right. Then we'll probably be in the newspaper, Big Brother whispered to Little Brother. Fortunately, there was no one at home, so Little Brother put Peter right the kitchen table while Older Brother fetched his jigsaw. Peter was babbling incessantly about running horses and had no idea what was going on when his little brother pulled up his pants and Big Brother raised the saw. But when the saw blade just touched the leg, he kicked and screamed and wanted to go home, and since he now seemed completely unreceptive to arguments of reason, the brothers knew nothing better than to tie him up the clothesline. Despite his inferiority, Peter proved possessed of giant powers. It may well be, said Elder Brother indifferently. Relentlessly, he tore the handkerchief out of Peter's mouth, which did not change its position reason. He lay glaring at the ceiling and didn't even bother to close his mouth. How stupid he looks, said Elder Brother with deep contempt. Well, he's also stupid, all that he said to all his nonsense about horses. Big Brother tried to lift the floor bucket to pour the colored water into the sink. The doorbell rang. We are not closing up. Little Brother peed again, and when he looked imploringly at Big Brother, he peed too. He. It kept ringing. Little Brother looked out from under the kitchen curtain, but ripped eyes immediately closed. It is, it is a po, poti, polyby. You can see what I said. Big Brother hissed, and Little Brother thought suddenly that it was a brand new Big Brother with a crooked mouth. They think that it is us. Big Brother was silent. Then he looked down at the floor. We have to get it away, he said, plout spoken. And like possessed, they gave in, scrubbing the thick blood back and forth on the floor. The door rang again. They come in. They blow the door down. Take, take, they take us, whispered Little Brother, trembling. It was you who started it. It's just mother, said Elder Brother, and smiled with a smile that looked like him himself. He was just red all over his head, but mother could probably wash that off. Mother, cried Little Brother. I haven't been home at all, said Mother outside. Well, said the police officer, someone has run over a little boy outside your house. He seems to have driven on and no one saw anything that. I guess it's not. One of my... It took in the door. Big Brother dragged Little Brother out of the kitchen and slammed the door. Oh, thank God, Mother moaned and kissed them both, by which she not so little blood on him. Well, how do you look? The boys said nothing. You are completely red. Have you come to anything? Does it hurt? 
The boys didn't answer. Answer me, are you alive? Are you the ones who have been run over? Yes, mother, said elder brother and started to cry. Me too, outspoken, and like possessed, they gave in scrubbing the thick blood back and forth on the floor. The door rang again. They come in, they blow the door down. Take, take, they take us, whispered little brother trembling. It was you who started it. It's just mother, said elder brother, and smiled with a smile that looked like him himself. He was just red all over his head, but mother could probably wash that off. Mother, cried little brother. I haven't been home at all, said mother outside. Well, said the police officer, someone has run over a little boy outside your house. He seems to have driven on and no one saw anything that. I guess it's not one of my... It took in the door. Big brother dragged little brother out of the kitchen and slammed the door. Oh, thank God, mother moaned and kissed them both, by which she not so little blood on him. Well, how do you look? The boys said nothing. You are completely red. Have you come to anything? Does it hurt? The boys didn't answer. Answer me, are you alive? Are you the ones who have been run over? Yes, mother, said elder brother and started to cry. Me too, said little brother and cried along, in half. Come and get washed clean, mother gasped. She tore the door open the kitchen, the blood sloshing around her legs and hanging in cakes on the walls. Well, have you been run over in here? Yes, mother, cried older brother. At once, cried little brother. The policeman suddenly stood in the doorway with big brother's chainsaw in hand. What is it? I don't know, said mother, but let me get them washed. And she washed them white as angels. Then they were put to bed as big brother had predicted but they appeared in the newspaper the following day anyway.